Hey everyone, thank you for joining me today uh, on this webinar by CNCF QC uh, as we explore the topic of harnessing the power of Kubernetes network scanning for improved security posture. My name is Karan Jot Singh and I'm excited to be your presenter for today's session. Uh, before we dive into the details, uh, let's start with a brief introduction. Uh, as you know, Kubernetes is an open source container orchestration platform uh, that has gained immense uh, popularity in recent years. Uh, with its ability to manage and scale containerized applications, uh, Kubernetes has become the go-to choice for many organizations. Uh, however, with the increasing adoption of Kubernetes, uh, the security concerns have also surfaced. Uh, this is where KubeScape really comes into the play. Uh, so today we are going to see how KubeScape will help to increase your security posture in Kubernetes uh, through network scanning. Uh, before that, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm Karan Jot Singh. Uh, I love doing security and open source work. Uh, I've been a contributor uh, to open source for quite a long time. Uh, I'm currently interning as a Google Summer of Code student at KDE. Uh, I've worked previously as an LFX uh, Linux Foundation mentorship being done at CNCF Kubescape. Uh, where I worked over this project uh, of Kubescape Network Scanner, uh, which I'm going to show uh, showcase you to do. Uh, so for today's agenda, uh, we are going to see what Kubescape really is and how it helps uh, you to secure your Kubernetes security posture. Uh, then we are going to see uh, what is network scanning, how network scanning really works inside ports, and related use, scans, use cases uh, like network, is network scanning really important. Uh, then we are going to look into Kubescape Network Scanner and how it's different and uh, are, there are a lot of other scanning in the market. Uh, what makes Kubescape Network Scanner unique? Uh, basically, it's features. Uh, then we are going to look into the engineering side of Kubescape Network Scanner, like uh, how Kubescape Network Scanner really works. Uh, then there's uh, this one, an interesting part, uh, which is a live demo where I'm going to showcase uh, how we can operate with Kubescape Network Scanner uh, to discover open ports and services. Uh, then we are going to look into the future of Kubescape Network Scanner, uh, what plans we have to future about uh, its integration uh, and the call to action. So after that, I'm going to summarize all these points uh, and make a conclusion out of it, or whether uh, you should try Kubescape Network Scanner or not, or uh, how's, how is it going to help you in your security posture. So what is Kubescape? Kubescape is an open source Kubernetes security platform, uh, which is also a CNCF sandbox project. Uh, it helps in securing your Kubernetes clusters, CI CD pipelines, uh, it defines and enforces the best practices uh, from frameworks like NSA, Mitray, and you can also build upon custom frameworks. Uh, so basically, Kubescape provides Kubernetes hardening and attack surface reduction. Uh, it has really easy to use CLI, uh, which offers multiple output formats. Uh, it has also automated uh, vulnerability scanning. Uh, which helps to save a lot of time uh, for Kubernetes user and admins. Uh, basically, uh, it's the best tool uh, to have uh, into your Kubernetes clusters uh, to help you secure your clusters. Uh, it reports, as it reports, uh, a lot of misconfigurations and role-based access violations. So it's a really good tool to have. Uh, then we're going to look into network scanning inside ports. Uh, so basically, as you can see, there's a Kubernetes cluster over here, and there are multiple services running inside these containers, uh, which are inside ports. And uh, you can see how everything is connected to each other, uh, the Kube API server, Kubelet, the port, and the container. 
So there could be a lot of hidden services uh, which may be overlooked and are become hidden. Uh, so these services uh, poses a great amount of risks. So these compromised services, if compromised uh, within a container, can result in compromising the entire cluster, uh, which is really bad. So network scanning is really essential. Uh, it is essential to identify these services, uh, which may be uh, running vulnerable softwares or are vulnerable to some attacks. Uh, so uh, we need a good network scanner to scan these services. So now we are going to look into uh, the gaining access part, uh, like what if there is a service running which is vulnerable, how can I tag it with a shell? So let's assume that uh, there's an attacker and there's a vulnerable Postgres service running uh, inside one of the containers uh, within a board. Um, so this vulnerable service, uh, the attacker can gain access or shell inside the containers. Let's assume that the vulnerable service uh, uh, was using some older version or was set up with the default credentials. Uh, so the attacker can be easily access inside the container. Uh, the attacker can also try accessing the Kubernetes API without uh, the credentials. Uh, if the cluster is based on the previous releases of Kubernetes, uh, which allowed access uh, to Kubernetes API without credentials, uh, then again, uh, the attacker can try to look into other exposed services or scan the network like etcd um, because many people uh, try to install etcd to manage network policies uh, outside the cluster. So this, it is really possible that uh, if an attacker gains access to the etcd, he can remove the network policies, then it's piece of cake to, be, uh, to gain control inside the Kubernetes cluster and compromise the whole cluster. Uh, so you see a point that if we can't really have vulnerable software running inside the inside the container. Uh, it's really dangerous uh, for your Kubernetes network. So network scanning is really essential. We saw that. Uh, we saw uh, what if an attacker gains a shell inside the container. It's really dangerous and the, uh, it could happen because of maybe hidden service or vulnerable services running inside the containers. So uh, here comes to rescue the Kubernetes Kubescape network scanner, which is a network scanning service discovery package. Uh, so the question arises, uh, why? Why do we need Kubescape network scanning? And there are a lot of network scanners already in the market. Uh, what makes Kubescape network scanner really different from them? Uh, so I'm going to answer this in the next slide. So is this. Uh, so uh, these are the really great features which makes Kubescape network scanner really different from those uh, in the market. So there's no port mapping approach to discover services. Like most scanner uses a port service map to discover service. Uh, for example, uh, like for, we know that for 443, um, it's running HTTPS. So many scanner is that uh, try to find these open ports. Uh, if the open port is 443, uh, they map it to HTTPS and show you that HTTPS was running over that. Uh, but it is possible that uh, the service may not be running on there. Maybe uh, the person configured this port to run other service. Uh, it, uh, it could happen, like it's possible. Uh, so this service might get hidden and there might be false negatives on the scanner, uh, which Cube Scan Network Scanner doesn't do because it uses a different approach, uh, which involves pinging back the service and trying to identify if it's really that service run or not. Uh, so you can discover hidden services with the Kubescape network scanner. Uh, due to above approach, uh, most scanners will fail to find hidden services running on different ports. Uh, it would result in false negatives, whereas Kube, uh, Kubescape network scanner uh, is really good for this. Uh, then again, uh, if you look into most scanners, uh, they try to discover open ports and 
uh, only the service is running. Uh, they don't uh, tell you if it is authenticated or not, uh, if it is an exposed service or not, if it's like, uh, running a vulnerable version or not, or or if it has default credential set or not, uh, which keeps Kube Network scanner does. Uh, so it's really a plus point for Kube Kube Network scanner that it helps to you know, also tell that uh, if the service is authenticated or not, and if it is exposed or not. Uh, then uh, now let's see the engineering behind uh, Cubescape and what's kind of like uh, what makes it different from how it works. So Cubescape and what's kind of is totally based on the OSI model, uh, which you can see and it's leveling model. And on this, uh, on this, we basically use the transport layer, session layer presentation layer, and then the application layer. So it scans from layer by layer from scanning from transport layer to application layer and try to discover services running on each layer. For example, uh, if you are trying to scan the TCP port, uh, it will tell us that the transport layer is running TCP. Um, then it uh, looks for the session layer. Uh, if if uh, the authentication is enabled, like if there is a TLS configuration enabled or not, uh, then it results in TLS. Uh, then it scans for presentation layer, uh, if it's running HTTP or not, or GPRC, uh, or any other service. Uh, then it discovers the application layer, the service uh, running on the application layer. So basically it tries to maintain a seamless connection between layers, uh, because each layer depends uh, upon the previous layer. Like the session layer would depend on the transport layer, presentation layer would depend on the session layer, and application layer would depend on the presentation layer. So each layer depends on the other, and it maintains a connection. Uh, it also tells the version that is running. Uh, like for if it tries to discover the presentation layer, let's go to post uh, Then it uh, tries to discover what version it is running. And it might be a vulnerable version. Uh, so this helps to maintain an easy flow of discovering that service. So now let's start on the hands-on demo of this. And I'm going to show you how Cubescape Networks can really works. So I'll show you the code demo first. Uh, like how the code looks and uh, what is behind the Cubescape Network scanner and how it really works. Uh, then I'll show you some practical demo uh, with discovering service. Uh, we'll try to discover three services, mainly uh, one would be authenticated and one would be authenticated to show you how it works, if it is authenticated or not, or uh, what properties does it get, provide us with. Uh, also, uh, just to make sure to tell you that uh, Cubescape Network Scanner is still an early level project and still there needs a lot of development on it. Uh, so it's just an idea uh, that works really well. Uh, okay, so what, this is the main repo for the Cubescape Network Scanner. It is a network scanner and service discovery package. Uh, we have defined the main interface and this interface to go there. And we have defined a numerous number of interfaces, structs, and uh, you can say uh, functions to uh, make it work seamlessly. Uh, let's go inside the package. So inside the key. Uh, Cubescape Network Scanner Package. There are two sub packages uh, for discovery and service discovery. Uh, let's first explore the port discovery package. So, in the port discovery package, uh, it is same as how the other network scanners would implement uh, using using the NUT library and trying to connect. Okay, so it is used to scan only a single target, and if you want to scan multiple targets, it is just this. Uh, then you need to pass flags, like uh, if you want to only scan PCP, and if you only want to scan UDP. Uh, 
uh, or if you don't mention these, like, like you basically scan both. So this is just a uh, little go to those uh, packets. We have tried to implement four routines in this uh, using which uh, the network scanner works pretty fast. And now the service is covered a uh, package which does the not speak, uh, which is different from uh, most of the network scanning, I mean, every network scanning. Uh, so we have eight types uh, where we have implemented the different interfaces. Uh, so, uh, like previously, I was telling you about this in the uh, how cubes came up the scanner works uh, slide that it tries to maintain a seamless connection. This is how it does that. Uh, we have defined a interface for every uh, layer, as you can see. And uh, basically each interface is dependent on the previous, like it is dependent on the session handler uh, to provide it uh, with the session uh, so that it uh, maintains that session over the time to help other layers discover the service upon it. So if you can see, it depends upon the previous layer, uh, that is session layer. And if you can see, the application layer depends on the presentation discovery result. So it, uh, it maintains connection between each layer. Uh, now if we look at this, uh, our session layer discovery is implemented. So it's just use uh, CryptoTLS library to and create a config file and use a dialer to connect and discover that it is a TLS. And then if we move to, well, uh, let's move to the main part. Uh, which is uh, how it discovered the applications. Uh, for each application, uh, the discovery is different. Like, if I show you the example of QAP1. So you basically know you can access QAP1 by sending a request uh, to, to uh, sub, right? So if you can see, it depends on the uh, session layer and then also the presentation layer. It depends upon the presentation discovery result as well. So basically it creates a secure client, uh, which connects, which tries to connect with the QPPS server and checks the response code. Uh, so basically, that was something uh, which we observe uh, that the kind field kind header is set to API versions uh, when we detect uh, the cube API server. Uh, so basically, then it is detected true and uh, it's not authenticated. And if we look at another status code, uh, so we basically scan the kind response header in this too. And uh, if the response header uh, has kind in it, so basically uh, it's detected, it's QBAPI server, but uh, the uh, it does require authentication. So each discovery is implemented a different way. So these are the packages. Uh, so let's move to the demo part where we would be discovered. Uh, practical service. So here, let's start the cubes game. Uh -huh. so. Okay, so basically, you need to use the scan command here. So the scan command tells us which flags does it need. So it needs a TCP flag or UDP, and if you leave this out, it will scan for both. And you need to add a post address or IP address or a list of IP addresses. You can also uh, add the domain name rather than an IP address. And you need to mention the ports. If you don't mention the ports, it's scan for all of them. So let's try. Uh, 
Let's try to scan at city first. Uh, let me start at city server in my local host. So I've started at city server. Okay, so server and at city runs on 23794. If you can see, we are able to fast the tries to identify the ports. Uh, it's a 23790 DC And uh, then it tries to discover services on it. And if, in, if we know that uh, etcd doesn't use the session layer, uh, it connects with the presentation layer, which is HTTP. Uh, then it tries to discover the etcd servers. And if uh, it is authenticated, uh, and then it returns true. And if we look at it, uh, we are not able to get any properties because it is authenticated. We are not able to get full server. Uh, that's like a good security posture. So let's try to discover some other service. Uh, how about uh, the server? So yeah, you can see here, it's exactly the same result. The Kubernetes API server is also authenticated. And we are able to discover the presentation layer as well. Uh, now let's try to discover uh, Elasticsearch. Uh, and I've made Elasticsearch unauthenticated. Okay, so we are now trying. Scan. So here you can see uh, the Elasticsearch is authenticated. It uses the SCTP presentation layer, and we are able to get that it is not authenticated. That's why we are able to get these properties that uh, what is the name of the cluster, and the cluster UID, and the name uh, of the system for which uh, it's running. So that's how you can discover services with kubestable cluster. Uh, you can also export this result into friendly, let's say, um, JSON file. Let's see. Ah, friendly JSON output and the JSON. Okay, so let's start that account and then friendly JSON output. Yeah, you can see we have started. Uh, so that's how Cubescape Notebooks kind of really works. Uh, this was just a little demo. And you can try it out yourself and try to identify uh, authenticated and unauthenticated services. Uh, again, this is just an early development of the project. And there's a lot of work to be required to be done on it, uh, to integrate it into Cubescape. So uh, that's for the demo part. Now let's go to the next slide. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed the demo. And if you have questions, uh, let us know in the comment sections. Uh, so let's look into the future of Kubescape Network Scanner. And as we look toward the future, Kubescape Network Scanner has exciting plans for further growth and enhancements. Uh, one of our primary goals is to integrate Kubescape Network Scanner into the Kubescape ecosystem. Uh, and the larger Kubernetes community. This integration will allow us to extend the reach of our network scanning capabilities and would provide a more comprehensive solution for securing Kubernetes environments. Uh, in addition, we plan to enhance uh, Kubescape network scanner uh, by incorporating advanced vulnerability scanning. This could uh, include scanning for like weak credentials uh, and exploring other potential security risks that organizations may face in their Kubernetes deployments. Uh, our ongoing commitment is to provide you with a more detailed output and actionable insights. Uh, we want to deliver comprehensive reports that not only highlight vulnerabilities, uh, but also provide guidance on how to mitigate these risks effectively and strengthen your security measures. Uh, so that's uh, that's so far for the future of Kubescape Network Scanner. Uh, as we come to this end of this webinar, I want to emphasize the importance of harnessing the power of Kubernetes network scanning 
uh, to improve the security posture. Uh, so take action by exploring Cubescape network scanner and integrating it into your security practices. Uh, the advice I will give is continuously scan your Kubernetes clusters, identify vulnerabilities, uh, reduce your attack surface, and fortify your deployments by Kubescape. Uh, remembering uh, that securing a, a Kubernetes environment is an ongoing journey. And so staying up to date with the latest security best practices, uh, engaging with the community, and always prioritizing the security of your deployments. So thank you all for joining me today. I hope you found this uh, webinar really insightful and that it sparks further exploration into the realm of Kubernetes. Uh, so stay, stay secure, stay engaged, and keep harnessing the power of Kubescape Network Scanning. And uh, if you have time, you can also contribute to Kubescape Network Scanner uh, and Kubescape ecosystem. Uh, we are always looking for new contributors to join us. Uh, and you can all, always be board reviewers and maintainers. Uh, thank you all for joining us.